Hey everybody, J.D. Hoovener here again, your managing partner here at Bold Patents Law Firm. Uh, as a patent attorney, it's my pleasure to be able to share with you the knowledge uh, that I've gained in my career here um, and some of the nuggets we've picked up from other attorneys at the law firm and pass them to you here in the Bold Today Show. Uh, today we're picking up on step two of the big process of how to patent your idea. So yesterday we talked about you know getting the, the big uh, sticking point. You know, one of my pet peeves is using the word idea versus invention. So the way I'd like to reca reclassify this is uh, actually, you know, how do I get a patent for my invention? Um, so I'll leave that with the previous session. If you missed it, hop on our website at boldip.com. You can check that video out. Um, but today we're talking about step two. Okay, step two is should you even try to protect your invention? Okay, wow, interesting. Well, even if you've got that invention, you've got something you think is, you know, razzle dazzle, has your hair standing up, um, should you even try? Um, in other words, is it eligible? Does it fit within the statutory guidelines of the patent process? Uh, there are only four major types of patents out there that are eligible under the utility statute those are machines, manufacturers, compositions of matter and processes. Yeah, those are four. So machines and devices, that's kind of what you think about everyday devices, things you can touch and feel. Uh, these are products, okay? Products that are, you know, you've seen on ads, seen on TV, um, you know, the, the latest and greatest, uh, you know, um, Apple device. Those are, those are manufacturing, right? those are actual products, okay? So the second is very, very close, it's called a manufacturer. Um, also to be thought of as an assembly. So if there are parts that are taking off the shelf or that are used from um, other parts that have already been created before, but they've been put together and assembled in a unique way to provide a unique function, that's the second category here called manufacture. The third is called the composition of matter. And this includes really anything, whether it be powders or liquids, um, solids, uh, usually it falls in the category for biotechnology, including pharmaceuticals, uh, anything that where it's, where it's sort of a mixture of atoms and elements that comes together in a composition of matter. That's this third category. Last but not least is the process patents or methods. These are steps, right? These are, these are sequential chronological steps that must be performed in that manner to produce a novel and functional output. So th that's it. That is the realm and the sphere of what's eligible. Um, oftentimes, you know, we do have inventors come in with sort of a uh, thought about protecting their software. Software inventions are the most critical to be looked at in terms of eligibility because sometimes they can fall into what's called abstract idea exception and they're not patent eligible. There's only a few that are not patent eligible, but it's important to take a look at your invention to see if it might be at risk of not being eligible and therefore you should make the decision to not do the patent process at all. And we can help you with trade secrets and copyrights and trademarks, but patents is just not gonna be the way to go. This is for those inventions that are just doing what we have always done, right, in human history. Interact with humans, um, deal transactionally, but now you're just doing it on a computer. So that, at the very high level, if that's, if that's all your invention is, it's not gonna be patent eligible. You've gotta be able to show that there's some added functionality, there's added benefit from you being able to perform that on the computer. Okay, you're using uh, computing power, machine learning, some sort of artificial intelligence that's adding, giving you additional speed, additional reliability or efficiencies. That's exactly what you've got to be able to show to the examiner in a way that's novel, non-obvious, and has utility. So hopefully this is uh, straightforward enough. Step two is making sure that you're actually on the right track at all. Should you file? Should you even try to seek patent protection? It's been my pleasure talking with you here today. I'm J.D. Hoovener, your host of The Bold Today Show. Please get with us online at boldpatents.com or give us a call at 800-849-1913. Take care, everybody. Go big, go bold.